Hello, and welcome to the second beginner tutorial for Shader Sandwich. My name is Sean Butker, and I'll be showing you through some more interesting stuff this part. So, if you haven't already seen the last part, I'd suggest taking a look at it first, as it sets up a lot of stuff that we're going to be doing this time. I mean, we're basically starting off where we left off, so <laughs> I'd definitely suggest taking a look there. So, what are we actually going to be doing this part? Well, we're going to be adding on to our Legacy Diffuse Shader, and make it its own thing, by adding a rim light. So, I'll show you that now. So this is a rim light. As you can see, it's got this nice blue glow around the edge. So I can adjust the color here. I can adjust the power, or the width of it in this case, and all sorts of cool things. And if I make the cube, which is a sphere, a monkey, you can see how it maps on really nicely. Looks pretty cool. It's a really nice looking effect. It's pretty cheap on mobile. It's all, all in all, it's pretty cool. All right, well, let's actually make it. And, all right, so, first things first, load up the Legacy Diffuse Shader we created last time. Now, if you don't have it, or you want to start from this tutorial for whatever reason, you should be able to find a version of it within the Shader Sandwich um, example files. So to get to there, just go into Shader Sandwich, Example Files, and you'll be able to find it in here. So just open the Diffuse one. Now, I'm, I can't stress this enough very seriously, do the first part first, okay? They're in an order for a reason. You learn a lot of stuff in the last one. So, anyway, I digress. Let's actually get started. <laughs> Alright, so, your first instinct might be to add a new layer to the Diffuse channel, since we've been doing that for a while. Well, in this case, it's not what we want. The Diffuse channel is lit by lights. However, the rim light needs to glow around the edge. No, we need a different channel. And we actually need one that doesn't exist at the moment. We need one for glows. Well, we need to enable this, so to do that, we're going to go into our base settings. To get there, just click on the settings right at the lower left corner. Just click settings, and here we are. These are the base settings. These affect many of the shader's global settings, such as how it interacts with light, whether or not it has specular highlights or shine, transparent bits, power occlusion mapping, shells, miscellaneous settings, and, most importantly, emission, or glow. So, we're going to turn emission on. To do this, just click the X button, turn it into a tick, and there we go. Alright, so now let's go back into our layers area by clicking on the layers button on the lower right corner. And you'll see we now have a new channel called Emission, where and what color the glow is. Alright then, let's add a new layer to this. So, just click the plus button at the bottom. So, you can already see parts of it glowing, however, it's not particularly interesting right now. So. What we're going to do is I'm going to make this a gradient. So, right at the top of the layer settings, I'm going to change the layer type to gradient. Click, and there we go. You'll see that the start color's at the top, and the end color's at the bottom. So, the way emission works is the brighter the color, the more it emits. So, obviously, a color of black won't actually emit anything. So, the idea is we're going to map this start color to the edges of the object, while the end color will be in the center. This way, the edges glow, while the center stays the same. So, before we actually map it, I'm going to change the preview model to a sphere, because that way I can actually see it properly. The rim light only works on smooth edges. I mean, it works on cubes, but it doesn't look the best. Alright, so let's actually map it correctly. So, let's scroll down to the bottom of the layer settings, and you'll see an area with UV map, reflection, direction, rim light, generate, etc. So, this is the mappings panel. Basically, the idea of mapping is it decides what parts of the layer to put on what parts of the model. For example, should the texture be flipped, should it be mapped to the reflection, things like that. In this case, we're going to map our gradient to the rim light setting. So we're going to click rim light. So this maps the left parts to the edge of the object, and the right parts to the center. And already you can see it starting to take shape. You can see this sort of subtle glow around it. I'm just going to change the color to something a little brighter, so that way we can see it a bit better. There we go. Alright, well, we're certainly getting there. Let's save this out. So, I'm going to hit File, and hit Save As, and I'm going to save over my rim light shader, which I already made. This is the fifth time recording this, uh, so that's great. <laughs> so I'm going to save over that, but feel free to, you know, call it whatever, and don't save over a file that doesn't exist. Alright, so now I'm going to set this material on the cube that is a sphere. Oh, well, okay, it's already set, I guess. And there we go. So our rim light shader is working pretty nicely. 
However, you'll notice it's got a similar problem as last time in the diffuse shader. You can't change the color yet. Well, to do this, we just need to add an input for it again. So, over in our emission, in our gradient layer and the start color, you'll see a blue gear. Clicking on that will bring up the inputs panel, just like last time, and then click the plus button. The gear will turn orange again, and that means that there's an input in the materials panel. So finally, just save it again, and you'll see it pops up here. Cool, so we can now change the color pretty happily in the materials panel. Pretty cool. However, we're still missing one last bit, which is the ability to change the width. Now, there are numerous ways to do this in Shader Sandwich, however, I'm going to cover the simplest here. So scroll down to the bottom of the layer settings for the gradient layer, and you'll see an area called Effects. So what Effects allows to do is change the layer in numerous ways, such as blurring it, hue shifting, pixelizing it, flipping it, things like that. In this case, we're going to add a Maths effect. To add an effect, just click the plus button. So we're going to add the Maths Power effect. So just click on it, and there we go. So basically what this does is for the red, green, and blue components, it raises it to a power. Just like, you know, squaring, cubing, things like that. So in this case, I'm just going to bump mine up to 2 and we can see what happens. And you'll see how it makes it thinner. The larger the power, the thinner it is. And the lower the power, the thicker it is. Okay, so finally we're just going to make our power have an input. So we're going to click on the blue gear again, click the plus button. And there we go. It's easily adjustable now. So let's save it out. File. Save. And there we go. We have our rimlet shader. You can change the power pretty easily. Change the color. It's all looking pretty cool. Alright, well, that's still pretty simple overall, isn't it? If you follow it along, you should have some basics, but let's actually do something more interesting now. So, I'll see you over in the next tutorial for that, where we're going to make a cool looking lava shader. Alright, we'll see you over there. As usual, if you have any feedback or have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll be sure to answer them quickly. Alright, well, thanks for watching. See you guys later.